Uh, the, <coughs> oh, the other thing, if we back up just a sec, uh, the other thing is that this carriage has the, has the air pads in it uh, on, on the sides and, and front and back. Uh, is a rather massive thing, and the vacuum chamber is diminutive, so there's there's room for a lot of stuff on here. So if anybody has application for a transient freefall of 0.9 seconds, which is surprisingly long for the laboratory, repeated 50,000 times a day, um, it, there's there's real estate going back in there. Um, lift capacity is not going to be a, a whole lot more than our bigger vacuum chamber for the uh, for the second generation experiment. We could work. Jim, why is the why is the granite table U shaped? Uh, to to allow a space for the uh, motor magnets down the middle. The coil will hang down from the uh, from the cart into. We'll, we'll turn the turn the old rail on its side, have the slot point out, and have the have the coil uh, sticking down into it. Yes. Will the piece of granite be carved or uh, will it be assembled? Oh, uh, sorry. Will be carved from one piece of granite, or will be a uh, montage of three pieces somehow from the other? As I understand it, it's carved. It's carved from one piece, but uh, it's my colleague who's doing the purchasing of this thing, and he's followed the details. Thank you. If you stick your hand up in the back, I have very poor vision, so feel free to uh, to call out or somebody else point out that we have a question in the back. Yes. But the only surfaces that have to be polished when I finish are the outer surfaces. Correct. Correct. Yes. We and noticed. Move down metal can be relatively rough. Mm -hmm. yeah. It still needs to be accurate enough that the motor coil doesn't spring. Right. That's it. Uh, all that you need is to have enough range of adjustment in the screw to screw down the motor. Actually, I think they're looking into the thing pretty, pretty high accuracy. There, there will be a flexure in here to mount, uh, mount an air pocket on this side. There will be an air pocket sliding this side, one on the back. This is, will be suspended by brackets top and bottom, which I didn't, didn't show here. And then there are, there are four pucks under the front plate two on the, and uh, two on the left side. Uh, this block of aluminum, uh, the, the aluminum box wrapped around the granite way. The granite way is about a foot by a foot uh, dimensions. That aluminum box looks amazingly stiff to us. So we're looking for resonant frequencies above 200 hertz, and we think we will achieve them comfortably. One thing I got to check is the waggle of that granite beam on the spring formed by the tripod at the base. We need to beef up the, to a much bigger size beam in the base. But that's a simple calculation. Next. So uh, the motor controller. We used to think we used to boast that we had uh, 20 micron marks on our uh, optical position sensor, and the electronics reads it to five microns. And who cares? Ha ha ha! Because the uh, uh, the shelf only needs to follow behind the test masses to within a millimeter or so, uh, and not to get too close and bump. Uh, and then we realized all this vibration stuff was, was killing us. And uh, running along with five micron increments in your position sensor is like bouncing downstairs and trying to hold, hold the water in a glass of water. It's not going to work. So um, uh, we, we're replacing the square wave sense, the uh, motor control that we've got, which has a layer upon layer of bizarre servo theory in it um, with a, uh, a system that, that appears to have been thought out ad initio and be much more flexible and powerful in, in terms of servo tuning and also accepts a linear position signal which is, is, has an accuracy almost two orders better than the, than the five micron uh, clunks in the, um, in the old position sensor. Uh, so that's actually been donated to us by Aerotech, and Heidenheim uh, is about to donate the sensor. So um, we're, we're in, in pretty good shape for the, uh, for the motor. Uh, next. Um, now I want to back up and cover systematic error before we do the space-based test. Let's see. Um, 
we've put a great deal of thought into systematic error, uh, which I didn't want to trundle out all of the um, all of the error calculations, but but I'll, I'll introduce here uh, another of the major techniques we use for dealing with error, which is top and bottom swaps. We take a pair of task masses, we run uh, uh, whatever the colors. Oh, that's another color that turned out funny. That was supposed to be blue. Okay, uh, pseudo blue, which is really clear. Um, <laughs> And uh, red, and um, and red on the bottom. Then we run red on the top and, and clear on the bottom. Um, transparent test masses. That's, that's going to be interesting <laughs> to see how we make those reflective. Um, uh, the 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 trick here is that if you have a source of local gravity like this lump of mass here, and uh, and if the red mass violates the equivalence principle and falls faster than the transparent mass, then um, in this measurement here, where we're measuring the difference of accelerations of the two, we always measure the difference of acceleration because we, the high precision measurement is the difference of height. <coughs> um, here the equivalence principle signal makes the acceleration difference delta A, uh, number one, uh, greater. And here it makes delta A number two less. However, the lump of mass always, in both cases, increases the, uh, the difference of acceleration. And so if we subtract delta A1 from, de uh, delta A2 from delta A1, then we come up with a difference of differences of acceleration, delta A, and we get into differences of differences and even differences of differences of differences of acceleration. Uh, I'll say that fast a few times. Um, then, uh, then we subtract out the lump of mass, and we're left with the interesting equivalence principle part. And that also works for the largest gravity gradient. You turn this experiment on, and you're going to see an absolutely overwhelming signal, which is the fact that the lower mass is a half meter closer to the center of the Earth than the upper mass. The experience is 10 to the minus 7 g more acceleration. So you're going to see a 10 to the minus 7 g acceleration of the distance between them when you're trying to measure to a few parts times 10 to the minus 14. So you need to cancel that out extremely well. For that you need a to swap top and bottom. If you could swap top and bottom and keep them exactly the same distance apart, you'd be in good shape, but you won't. So, um, and, and by exactly the same, I mean to a part 10 to the eighth. So what you do is you measure the amount by which the distance between them changes, which is going to be of the order of a micron and you measure the distance between them to an accuracy of three one-hundredths of a micron, it turns out to be sufficiently accurate. And how do you do that? Well, you do it with an absolute laser distance gauge. We happen to have a handy-dandy absolute laser distance gauge in our back pocket, and so we apply it to this problem. Um, next. If, uh, with one yes. mass accelerating faster than the other, yes. do all the Doppler shifts still cancel exactly? Uh, it's really accelerating very, very little. I think differences of Doppler shift have a two. Um, to the extent that they constitute error sources are a very high order problem. Of course, you can look at the um, you can look at the distance signal itself as a Doppler shift because you're pulling back from the light wave as opposed to your retina. Um, but uh, no, I don't think that's going to be an issue. The accelerations really are tiny. And of course, the Earth's gravity gradient is differential because you measure half the time with, with red on top and half the time with red on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, another way in which the experiment is differential is, is that we will actually run with two pairs of test masses. And that immediately gives you some suppression of gravity gradient from uh, local sources because the two are only eight centimeters apart. 